there isn't really anything about espresso that is particularly easy. Either in a cafe or, especially at home, it can feel like an astrological event has to occur for everything to go right. Many baristas used to wax romantic about the best shot they ever had, and many still do. The difference now is that we have better tools and know-how to make espresso consistently good. With this setup, we'll be sort of painting by numbers to be able to reproduce an espresso recipe consistently. And yes, you may have guessed that this is a two-parter. So if you're not subscribed now, make sure that you do. That way you don't miss the hard part of espresso coming quite soon. For now, let's keep it simple and jump into the easy part of making espresso. So before we do anything else, we need to choose an espresso recipe. An espresso recipe will measure your input in ground coffee, your output in water, and the amount of time that it takes. So those three things are gonna help us make espresso consistently every single time. For home machines, a good bet is to start with 18 grams of espresso, 35 grams of water in about 28 seconds. You're gonna to wanna to have a gram scale that can measure in tenths of a gram. It's not gonna have a very high capacity, but we're only gonna be measuring espresso inside of a latte mug, a cappuccino mug, maybe a demi-tasse cup. You wanna have dedicated rags for both your porter filter, your steam wand, and for your counter. If you're using a stepped grinder, you're gonna to wanna to grind with the top 10 finest settings on your grinder. Typically, this is a good place to start. Some grinders come with calibration tools and instructions, so if this isn't fine enough for you, then give that a try. There's plenty of tutorials online, too, if there are no instructions for calibrating your grinder. If you're using a dedicated stepless grinder for espresso, obviously there's no settings. What I do in those situations is grind until the espresso starts clumping just a little bit. At this point, you're probably within the appropriate range for espresso. When you're prepping your shot, you wanna dose everything into the middle of the basket. Anything that's not in the middle, you wanna dose with your finger and get it nice and level before you go into tamp. People make a big deal about tamping, but the most important thing you need to do is keep everything level. The amount of pressure isn't super important as long as you're tamping enough. For me, this is when I feel that the coffee is fully compacted and I can't press anymore and it feels like it's pressing back at me. I will sometimes do a little twist, which isn't really a polish. I'm not using any pressure, I'm just using my thumb and my first finger to check and see that the tamper is level with the basket all the way around. Once your shot is all ready, you're gonna to go to the machine, rinse the group head, get everything nice and heated, wipe everything down again, and then set up your scale with your cup. Don't wait too long at this point. You want to engage the pump and start brewing your espresso as quickly as you can because, because, because once the espresso is ground, you're going to be losing a lot of aromatics and a lot of volatile gases that you want to capture in the brewing process. Okay, so let's say you prep the shot. You've got 18 grams ready to go, and you flip that switch and you get 35 grams out, but it's way, way, way too fast. You're getting it in about 20 seconds instead of 28. At this point, all you need to do is adjust your grinder to a finer grind setting. If the opposite is true and the shot's running way too slow and you're getting 30 seconds, maybe 35 seconds to get that espresso out, then do the opposite. Take your grinder and grind coarser. <sighs> So again, if it's running too fast, make the grind finer. If it's running too slow, make the grind coarser. So what if you get the espresso recipe just right, you go to taste it, and it's not tasting good? Here's a couple things you can do. If it's tasting sour and watery, or it's just not as strong as you like, then grind a little finer. It's okay to go up in time a little bit on this one, especially if you're using coffee that's a lighter roast. Now say you get the recipe just right, and it's super bitter. Okay, you don't want that. <laughs> if this is happening to you, then you probably need to grind a little bit coarser and make that same espresso recipe happen in a shorter amount of time. All 
Okay, everybody, that's it for the easy part of espresso. We're basically just learning how to replicate a recipe and only manipulate one variable at a time. Now, of course, this is the easy part, which means that it's really just a starting point. If you find that other recipes work better for you, then by all means, please use them. In the next video, we're gonna talk about the hard part of making espresso, which is doing just that. We're gonna go over this tasting wheel and really dive in deeper to tasting. All right, you guys, I'm out of here. See you next time. Cheers.